Hi, I'm Brian from Lind Equipment, and welcome to a in-depth look at our UVC decontamination light, what we call the Lind Apollo light. What we're going to cover in this presentation is a more detailed look at UVC and how our light can decontaminate it, more so than the quick takes that you may have seen already. We're going to cover what UVC is and how it kills viruses and bacteria. We're going to talk specifically about the Lind UVC decontamination light. And we're going to talk about applying the Apollo light to your specific applications and what resources we have to help you understand how to use this safely and effectively. So what is UVC light? Well, UV stands for ultraviolet and C stands for the particular group of wavelengths that we're talking about here. You won't be surprised to hear that there's also a UVA group of wavelengths and a UVB group of wavelengths. And you'll be familiar with those first two actually as part of your everyday existence on Earth. UVA and UVB comes from the sun, makes its way through the ozone layer, and if you spend a little bit out of time out in the sun, you'll get a tan from the UVA and UVB rays. If you spend a lot of time out in the sun, you'll get a sunburn from those same wavelength of UVC light, of UV light rather. UVC light is one uh, chunk of wavelengths even shorter than UVA and UVB. And that's what we're interested in for decontamination. So UVC doesn't normally make its way through the ozone layer. It doesn't occur here sort of naturally on earth, but using state-of-the-art LEDs, we can recreate and uh, UVC wavelength light right here from our Apollo light. And what UVC does, it's a very short wavelength ultraviolet light that actually makes its way into the DNA or RNA of the organisms you're trying to decontaminate and uh, destroys the, the DNA and RNA bonds. So effectively, effectively rendering the organism uh, inert. Um, certainly can't be harmful anymore and can't, be, uh, can't reproduce if it's given the right dose of UVC. We'll talk more about dose later. UVC is often known as UV germicidal light for this uh, action that it has in killing the germs that we find to be, uh, to be uh, harmful to us as humans. Um, but in the same way that it is very powerful in killing viruses, bacteria, spores, and fungi, it is also dangerous to humans and animals. So make sure that when you're using any UVC light, whether it's ours or someone else's, be sure not to be in the beam of the light uh, if you're not properly protected and keep other people out of the room while the decontamination is happening. The Lind Apollo light looks like this. It's a 21 inch, uh, six pound light that is made, uh, as we say, from uh, or the lights generated from LEDs that you can see in the middle of the board there. These LEDs generate this UVC light uh, at a particular wavelength that is uh, powerful in, in killing viruses and bacteria. The individual light can be hung from the ceiling uh, using the included straps, or it can be mounted to a wall or ceiling using the included wall mount. If you like as well, we do offer a stand, as you see here in the picture, that can fit anywhere from one to eight lights on it. Uh, at one light, it operates like a traditional floodlight, but at eight lights, like you see on the right, you now have a 360 degree UVC uh, decontamination light for larger areas or rooms. Each light comes with a plug and a connector as well, so you can daisy chain and string them together to have multiple lights on a single circuit. So when you're operating the UVC light, I think the first and foremost thing to remember that we've talked about already and that we have in common with all UVC lights is make sure that you don't expose it, uh, you don't expose your skin or your eyes to the UV light without protection. You must make sure that you stay out of the UVC beam while it's energized and let's not look at the light while it's energized. To make sure that you know the light is energized uh, because you can't normally see UVC light with your bare eyes, we've added two very large, very bright red LEDs to the light fixture itself. When the light is energized, these two red LEDs will light up so that you know that the light is active and to stay out of its beam. So we mentioned before the concept of dose. So let's talk about that a little bit. Shining UVC light on something isn't as simple as waving it over like a wand. It's more complex than that you need to get the right amount of dose of UVC light in order to kill the proper virus and bacteria or spore and fungi that you're looking to kill. Uh, just like we talked about receiving a little bit of UVA and UVB from the sun gets you a tan, but receiving a lot gets you a sunburn, 
The same idea applies to UVC lighting when we're looking to decontaminate organisms. You want to make sure you're giving it enough UVC, enough dose, in order to render it inactive. So the dose is what they, the organisms absorb, and we talk about dose uh, in terms of a metric called millijoules per squared centimeter. You don't need to know a lot about that particular no, uh, uh, metric, except that we measure dose by that. And we can increase the amount of dose we provide to uh, an area, a piece of equipment, a, a surface, by th altering three variables. The first would be increasing the strength of the UVC light. So you can think of this in terms of visible light. If you have a larger, brighter light, you're going to have more intensity of visible light in an area than if you have just sort of a small flashlight. Same thing applies to UVC light. If we increase the power of the UVC light, the thing that's in the way of that UVC light is going to receive a larger dose of UVC. We can also come closer to the light. So the, the smaller the distance between the UVC light source and the thing we're trying to decontaminate, the more dose you receive. Again, we can use the analogy here of visible light to think about uh, a street light. If you're very close to a street light directly under it, you see a lot of the light. You can use a lot of the light that it's putting off. As you walk away from that street light, you'll notice that the light it's giving to you is dimmer and dimmer. The light is still the same brightness, but the farther, farther you walk away, the less you get of benefit of that light as the light degrades as it moves further away from the light source. Same thing happens with UVC light. If we can get what we want to decontaminate closer to the light source, it'll receive a higher dose than if it's further away. And last thing, using the analogy of the sunburn and the suntan, if we increase the time that something is exposed to UVC light, we're going to increase the dose that it receives. So those are the three variables that we're playing with here. And I will note here, and we'll talk about it in a second, if you are decontaminating N95 masks or other sort of surgical masks, you are going to want to give that equipment a much higher dose uh, of UVC lighting than you may think that you may need. Um, and this is as per CDC recommendations. So how do we work with the Apollo light? Well, we can't see UVC light with our naked eyes, as we talked about before. Um, and really the only, uh, you know, really, really robust way of making sure that we're testing for effectiveness would be to have some sort of a viral culture uh, in the area, know how much is present there, shine the UV decontamination light, and then look again and see how much of that viral culture is left. Obviously, that's very difficult for most people to do in any, uh, any industrial, uh, even medical application. Um, and so what we can do is we can go back to the science that's been done on UVC lighting to understand how much dose was likely to need to be applied in order to uh, inactivate viruses, bacteria, spores, fungi, etc. And the good news is, as I mentioned before, is that UVC lighting has been around for decades. So there's a lot and lot of scientific data. And as we want to rely on the science here, we can go back and look at literally hundreds of studies uh, and the International UV Association has a great summary of studies on their website. You can get that from our website as well. Uh, to look back and see the specific scientific tests that have been done over time to examine the amount of UVC dose needed to render E. coli, SARS, MERS, coronaviruses, everything else you can think of has likely been tested. And so what we did is we looked at the summary of this data to say, all right, if we're looking to render inactive viruses and bacteria, what level can we get to of dose that we'll feel comfortable that everything below that, uh, you know, that that, that dose is, is high enough to, to render inactive all the things that we're talking about. And for viruses and bacteria, that number falls right around 50 millijoules. You may be surprised to hear that actually some uh, types of viruses um, that are certainly in the news today, like coronaviruses, SARS and MERS take something like six to 10 millijoules uh, of dose to be rendered inactive. We're talking about making sure you're applying about 50 millijoules uh, to render inactive viruses and bacteria, because there is a range of the different amounts that you will need for different viruses and bacteria. Spores and fungi, 100 millijoules is about a good a level to be conservative and safe. And again, if you are looking for N95 mask decontamination, the CDC recommends that you actually use a thousand millijoules. So a much higher amount that we want to uh, highlight there. So what we've done to make this easier for you is we've created what we call layout benchmarks. 
and they look like the one here on the screen. The first thing you need to think about is what level of decontamination do you want to get to? What are the things that you're trying to kill? Is it bacteria and viruses? Is it spores and, sp that spores and fungi? Is it N95 masks that you want to decontaminate? Figure out your choice on the level of dosage that you want to apply to uh, your equipment, your PPE, uh, or your area. Once you've decided that, you can uh, then think about the time frame in which you want to decontaminate. Is this an application where you can leave the light on overnight? Let's say you want to decontaminate a bathroom um, and you're happy to, to do that once a day at, once all the staff has left. That gives you a good eight hours of time to decontaminate. Do you want to decontaminate an examining chair in between patients at a dentist's office and you need to decontaminate it in 15 minutes? That's a different target that you want. Think about that target that you want. Think about the dose level that you want to get. And then you can refer to these layout diagrams, which will help you then determine how many lights, how you want to position them, and how far away you want them from the equipment that you're dealing with. So what we've done is we've created color-coded um, uh, dose levels here that relate to the amount of time you're going to want to, uh, you're going to need to use if you place equipment within those different pie wedges that you see there. So for example, if you have a single Apollo light, like in this diagram, and you place a piece of equipment in clear line of sight of the light within that two and a half foot radius, the first pie wedge there, you can reach virus and bacteria uh, decontamination levels of 50 millijoules in about six minutes. And we calculate that using the least intense spot in that area. Um, so you know that let's say that spot right in front of the light is actually going to get more than 50 millijoules, but you can feel confident that everything in that area is going to get 50 millijoules. You can see more benchmarks at www.lindequipment.net slash UVC benchmarks, UVC dash benchmarks, if you want to see more information uh, on this and other applications. Some tips for you when using UVC. And this doesn't relate specifically to our light, um, so keep these in mind no matter what UVC light you're using. First of all, I have to reiterate again, UVC light can be dangerous to humans and animals. Eye damage and skin damage will occur if you're exposed to UVC. Just please be sure that no one is in the beam of the UVC lights while they're energized. We have some red warning LEDs to let you know that it's energized. And what most people will do is either plug in the lights into an outlet that's outside the area that de they're decontaminating, or use a simple remote controlled outlet to energize and de-energize the lights when you're not in the room. Also, UVC light relies on line of sight. If you are um, shining the UVC light on the top of a table, for example, the area under the table will be shadowed and UVC light will not get there. Make sure that you're thinking about what you want to decontaminate and having as direct a line of sight as possible unencumbered by shadows or anything blocking it between the UVC light and that thing you're decontaminating. Another tip is that UVC is just one method of decontaminating, but it's certainly not the only one. And I would encourage you all to think about it as an addition to your already um, regular cleaning routines. Uh, UVC light is a great way to supplement your existing cleaning routine, but it doesn't replace good mechanical physical cleaning and in fact, if you are trying to decontaminate an object that is very dirty, it may actually have enough dirt on it to stop the UV rays from getting through. So make sure you're adding UVC to your existing cleaning routine rather than uh, trying to replace everything with UVC decontamination. And if in doubt, safety is the key priority. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about either keeping yourself safe or making sure that you're decontaminating properly to achieve the effective outcome, which of course is the safest outcome, um, the, uh, the removal of the uh, organisms that you're trying to decontaminate. So please reach out to us, info at lindequipment.net, and you can check out our mini site for the UVC uh, products, including lots of data, lots of science, um, this video and other tips and hints, lindequipment.net slash UVC. Thanks very much, talk to you soon.